Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some thought-provoking articles. We're going to start with this one. It's called, Here's How Cardano Can Fail. And this isn't written by just anybody. This is actually directly from Charles Hoskinson as he was interviewed by Lex Friedman. This was a five-hour interview, and we're going to go over just what could cause Cardano could fail, some of the different uh, hurdles that they're trying to overcome, and then also how to get out of tribalism because it's really not too great for the space. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, that article in depth because I think it's good to let go of some of our precognitions, which delves us into tribalism. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, Paraguay to unveil Bitcoin legislations next month. Hey, that's pretty great news. And some not so good news, but it doesn't matter. World Bank refuses to help El Salvador make Bitcoin legal tender, talking about environmental and transparency issues, the same old uh, rigmarole and song and dance. And then finally, we'll take a look at one of the most, I think, concerning articles, which is the SEC leaves Bitcoin and crypto off the regulatory agenda 2021. Why I believe it really comes down to the XRP lawsuit. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. But first, I just want to make mention that uh, today it is Sunday, the 20th, 1030 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And it's another Sunday dump, which is not surprising uh, if you've been in crypto any length of time. And uh, here we are. So right now, the total market cap is 1.44 trillion and everything's down. Uh, just so you know how far down we are, let's take a look at uh, the actual numbers. So real quick, Bitcoin's down 3%, 5% for Ethereum and so on and so forth. It was actually much worse about an hour ago. Uh, but you're looking at a Bitcoin price of 34.6, Ethereum teetering on 2000, Binance coin 327 and so on and so forth. And everything's just in the red. Is there anything green for 24 hours? And no, but in the hour, we've seen some recoveries, which is always positive. Kusama, Cosmos, uh, well, FTX token, sure points, but not too much. 1% for Chainlink. So actually pretty good day, uh, quite honestly. And there was this, there was a message uh, that I got, which made a lot of sense to me. And this is on Twitter and it was from JB and JB asked the question, what, what do you think about buying Bitcoin instead of alt? Cause I said, Hey, it's another Sunday dump. Uh, it just came as a quick dump. Uh, it's buying Bitcoin instead of alt on these dips since it's unclear whether we go bear or bull at this point. And if we continue the bull market, it's highly unlikely uh, Bitcoin will lead the way. So it's better to buy alt after all, all that happens. And it's a good question. And uh, it really comes down to this. We've seen so many dips and it's like every Sunday or sometimes every Tuesday, we just see it kind of like a little bit of degradation of what is going on with the market. So what I said to myself is, because uh, I'm always saying buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And it gets repetitive and it gets, it gets annoying. Let's, 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 uh, let's call a spade a spade. So I thought about this. Uh, I will always buy the dips. Uh, if I have the money, like in one of the dips, I just half-assed it. I couldn't really buy too much. But this is what I'm going to do this time. And I think I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Tell me what you think in the comments section. So what I did was I took a look at Voyager. And I took a look at the ones that were down the most. The ones that I actually have in my possession. Like uh, I think like CeeLo was down almost 10%. Uh, there were some other ones uh, that I just don't own. Like uh, Dogecoin was down like almost 10%. And uh, I just looked at the ones that I own already and say, okay, these are down so much in this dip. What do you want to do here? So what I'm going to do is I already bought, I bought 500 bucks worth of Ethereum. And the price was 2114 I bought uh, Polkadot, 250 bucks worth of Polkadot at 1976 And I bought Voyager token, which was down 7.8% for the day at $2.11. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you into my world a little bit and just show you my thinking. So for this one, instead of just buying, 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 and just holding, 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 I'm going to buy and I'm going to sell. And I'm, I call this uh, the buy the dip, sell the flip. And you can find this uh, in the um, uh, description of every one of my videos. There's a link. It's underneath strategies uh, along with the exit strategies. And I'm going to show you what I bought, uh, the different ones and the dates, uh, the, the price that, of what I bought it at, which, and then the one day change, how much I bought and when I sell it and go from there. There's a couple of different ways to, to play this. Uh, I think for me, I think the best thing to do is try to, because I spent a thousand dollars, try to get a thousand dollars back plus some. So if I can get a thousand dollars back, keep that cash for the next dip, but then acquire a little bit of cryptocurrency, 
I think it's a win-win. And uh, I'm going to pull on my friend CJ from Rocket Rebellion just to kind of go over some strategies of taking a look at the different technicals to when we can get out and go from there. And uh, I'll let everybody know, and you can find this every single day, anytime you want to, uh, of what I'm doing as far as these, these dips. And this is just a, something different to do. All right, that's what's going on. Uh, let's take a look at uh, today's top story. So this was fascinating. Uh, I like Cardano. I like Ethereum. I just bought Ethereum. So, you know, I, Ethereum is my second biggest hold, but I do like to see the inner workings of uh, the top people and it doesn't get much more top than uh, Charles Hoskinson over at IOHK, uh, co-founder of Cardano. And uh, this is what's going on. So with Alonzo looming on the horizon, it's fair to say that there is a lot of optimism around Cardano. That's true. And there's so much optimism, it can blind you. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons for this buy the dip uh, sell the flip type of thing because I don't want it to get just too much ingrained into it. You need to make uh, provisions. You need to, you need to make changes, and uh, that's I think is a sign of intelligence. Is uh, you know changing changing direction every so often just to see what works best. So it's worth exploring what would constitute a failure in Cardano's case. Uh, this is one of the major questions addressed by Charles Hoskinson on the latest episode of Lex Friedman. I will link that in the description. It's five hours. I'm two hours into it. Fascinating stuff. Here's what here's what Charles says. If it, the, uh, the project, continues to require the supervision of custodians, Cardano, in order for it to succeed, the system won't work. Custodians, it's supposed to be decentralized. It's supposed to be run democratically, and it's supposed to not just have a centralized figure. And that's the biggest thing, right? So if they can do that, which they're trying to do, uh, I think it'll work out pretty well. And he's saying, but if, if we have to always step in and, and fix everything, that's not how it's supposed to run. He says there's no guarantee that this will be sustainable. No guarantee the next step, the smart contract step, will achieve what we want. However, I will say this, they've already gone through with the, with the Alonzo uh, upgrade. They've already done a couple of smart contracts, and they have worked. This is only in the, only in the test net, so don't get all worked up. But it uh, looks like they're going to hit that August date, date line, or deadline. Um, we, there's no guarantee the governance step will achieve what we want. Hoskinson also highlighted his wariness about the likelihood of Cardano evolving in the wrong direction, a direction symptomatic of a centralized dystopia, like the Chinese social credit system, where uh, a small group of people has control over who gets to use the system and how they get to use it. And this is the problem, I think, with like a Binance Smart Chain. There's just there's so many, uh, like there's like 20 different uh, validators and that's it. And I think EOS is the same way. Correct me in the comments, but uh, I think there's not that many. And then with, but with stake pools, we're, we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of different stake pools that are out there. On top of the fact that you have something like this in your Daedalus wallet, on the left-hand side, if you click on the little voting guy hand icon thing, you can start to vote on the different resolutions that are going on. Now, you do have to download the Catalyst voting app, but that's right from the Daedalus wallet. Do not search for the Catalyst voting app in Google, you'll probably get something wrong. It'll probably uh, be a spam or a scammer type of thing. Go right to the Daedalus wallet, download that directly from IOHK, get it, then scan this, then get the app so you can vote on different things. And that's the whole point of what it's trying to do. Try to allow people to come in there and go, this is the direction we want to take Cardano as a decentralized uh, community. So, and then this was one that concerns me. According to Hoskinson, Cardano has incredible evangelicism evangelism right with a loyal community that believes in a mission of value such a community and this is what what he talks about but this last sentence he did not say such a community however runs the risk of becoming a cult or a religion that was what mike novograd said that deadless or that cardano is a weird cult and uh that's we did a video about that doesn't really make it's it is what it is i i like to call it a, a exuberant community and some people will say that cults are bad words but you know there's there's cults everywhere there's there's cults in science there's cults in finance there's cults uh, there's cults in uh, sports it is what it is right just it depends on how everyone want to say it and then uh, to finish up he says i hope they don't make the same mistake as bitcoin my hope is our community will be open Socratic and willing to entertain new ideas without adopting them and discard discard ideas that have proven to be wrong. And that, I think, is the hardest thing right there. And that's the, the heart of the matter is when we get into our projects, we become very uh, ingrained into them. We believe that it's the only project uh, because we've done so much research and it's so hard to do research on thousands and thousands of projects. It's impossible. So when you put 
I don't know, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, your life savings or whatever that you've done, I'm not saying this is not uh, investment advice, this is just investment opinion. Uh, when you put a lot of money into it, all of a sudden you're like, this is the only thing that works and it's gotta work because I put a lot of money into it, so it has to. But we have to take a step back and look at everything around us and go, is this going to be the one big thing? Now, I've taken a look at a lot of different projects on this channel and I think Cardano is gonna do extremely well. Do I think it's the only one? No. No, I do not. I think there's gonna there's a lot of room for a lot of different players in this space. Ethereum being one of them, Cardano, Avalanche, Polkadot, Tezos. I mean, a lot of different smart contracts, platforms. But this uh, um, tribalism, it uh, really destroys us, I, I feel like, because you have to understand, it's only us against the world. And there's not that many of us, if you really look around, as far as like crypto and digital assets. We are very early. And I'll give you an example. Go out in the street, ask anybody about Bitcoin and Dogecoin. And I used to just say Bitcoin, but Dogecoin is so, so uh, hot right now. And everybody's like, I know what that is and what it is. But ask him about Tezos and ask him about Polkadot and ask him about BTT and ask him about, you know, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. So we're super early. So when, when people, you know, start to, and they're going to attack us because it, it's, it's going to change the world. Uh, we have to rally around each other. And it's just like when somebody picks on your brother or your sister, you may not like your brother or sister too much uh, over time, but uh, you, you have to stick up for them. And that's just how I feel. So anyhow, let me know what you think of the comment section. Let's go on to our, our next piece. So Paraguay, uh, on, on the, on the uh, heels of El Salvador to unveil Bitcoin legislations next month. All right, good news. So Paraguay is set to unveil a crypto bill on the back of Bitcoin's El Salvador thing. The South uh, American country reels from a declining economy and ill-fated effects of dollar printing in the U.S., but officials are turning to Bitcoin to offset some of those side effects. Uh, Calitos Antonio Rejela Helman, a deputy of the nation and member of Congress in Paraguay, wrote on Twitter, this is Paraguay, in July we legislate. That sounds pretty good to me. And uh, that's his little tweet right there. And then he handed this in June that officials were possibly working with PayPal, working with PayPal. Let me say that again. He hinted in June that officials were possibly working with PayPal, nothing confirmed, on a Bitcoin-related project for the country. Well, now we know why Bitcoin, or why we, now we know why PayPal is getting everything, because they want to take over the world. As I was saying a long time, and this is, of course, you know, uh, in, in English, we're going to translate this real quick. This is what the tweet says. As I was saying a long time ago, our country needs to advance hand in hand with a new generation. The moment has come, our moment. This week, we start with an important project to innovate Paraguay in front of the world. And at the very end, you can see hashtag Bitcoin, hashtag PayPal. So uh, another great news of what is going on as far as like uh, nation states moving to cryptocurrency because the dollar is just not working for them. And I, th I feel like there's going to be a big battle between what different countries believe is as a currency, because that's what they say Bitcoin is going to be in legal tender as, a co as, a, as opposed to like uh, America and Canada and Europe where like it's just property. And I think there's going to be a battle, but we'll see how it all pans out. I think the real winners are us. Let me understand the comment section. And let's move on to almost our last piece, which is, I found this not surprising. So I'm just going to skip over it real quick. But World Bank refused to help help El Salvador make Bitcoin legal tender, citing environmental and transparency issues. First of all, I keep hearing about, when I was just getting in the space, I'm like, World Bank and IMF and World Bank and IMF. What do they do? Who are they? Are they the, the Illuminati? Anyhow, so this is what the World Bank is. The World Bank is an international development organization owned by 187 countries. Its role is to reduce poverty by lending money to the governments uh, of its poorer members to improve their economies and to improve the standard of living of the people. It was established in 1944 to help rebuild Europe and Japan after World War II, and they're still around, so good for them. And then the IMF. Yeah, they pretty much just like, uh, you know, set monetary policy. Uh, and the IMF is an organization of 190 countries, about the same, working to foster global monetary cooperation, secure financial stability, facilitate international trade, promote high employment and sustainable economic growth, and reduce poverty around the world, which is weird that they're not really even helping El Salvador to kind of just go, well, the, the, the environment. Really, well, you don't seem to have uh, a big problem with everybody mining batteries and uh, everybody using coal, uh, especially in China, uh, which I believe is one of the members. And uh, if, if you really want to, you know, crack down on the environmental issues, uh, I think Bitcoin is one of your least concerns, but uh, whatever. And uh, sure. So here's what it is. While the government did approach us for assistance on Bitcoin, this is not something the World Bank can support. 
given the environmental blah, blah, blah. On Wednesday, the finance minister of El Salvador, Alejandro Zileja, said the country has sought technical assistance from the World Bank to implement the law to use Bitcoin as legal tender. That's pretty great. Uh, Zileja also said the international IMF is not against, this is interesting, El Salvador implementing Bitcoin as legal tender after he explained that this country will not abandon the US dollar. So that's the big thing. As long as you're on board with the US dollar and you're just kind of using the Bitcoin as a, as a supplementary, they're like, cool, that's fine. Which, if that's what you got to do, it's what you got to do. Trojan horse it. Who cares, right? Just let just get things going, get the uh, get the the ball rolling, and then uh, do what you want to do later on. Uh, he states, "We gave our official position to the IMF. We have been emphatic. We are not replacing the U.S. dollar." The finance minister said the an IMF spokesperson said they are macroeconomic, financial, and legal issues with the Bitcoin law, but they're still letting it go forward. So that's good. Meanwhile, the Central American Bank for Economic Integration which I didn't know actually existed until uh, a couple weeks ago, which has 15 countries said it will provide technical assistance to help El Salvador implement Bitcoin as legal tender. This is the big thing. I think like in Central America, they're looking out for Central America. So like this, the CABEI is the one that is really going to say, let's do this because a lot of countries are going to go forward. The IMF is like, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let it go. And of course, the, the, the global bank, the world bank's like, no. So again, there will just be a, a little bit of a fight, but we're moving in the right direction. I think I see these both as signs uh, that it's very bullish for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. What I do not see as very bullish is this next story. And this is really what concerns me. The SEC leaves Bitcoin off crypto agenda. What the heck is going on? Before I move on with this one, this is the last story and then we'll take off. But uh, I do believe a lot of people, the SEC included, in a lot of different countries, are looking at this uh, Ripple case, Ripple and XRP. So if you don't think this is a big case, this is a huge case. And I think just like in, in law, it's all set on precedent. So if this comes out and there is a decision where it's like, okay, XRP is not a security and it's all okay. And you just pay a little fine and off you go, which I think which is what's going to happen. I think this is going to just fast track regulation. I think this is why they left it off, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments section, but uh, it's not on the, on the agenda. The official, the Office of the Information and Regulatory Affairs released the Biden administration spring 2021 unified agenda of regulatory and deregulatory actions last week. And some of the items the SEC will consider include disclosures related to climate risk, corporate board diversity and beneficial ownership and swaps. The SEC will also focus on rules relating to SPACs and short sale disclosure reform. Bitcoin and crypto are not a part of that, which is weird because this is like what it says here. The chairman last month, uh, Gensler, the chairman urged Congress to pass crypto legislation to protect investors, adding that crypto exchanges needed more regulation. In addition, the SEC cautioned investors about funds trading in Bitcoin futures last week. And that just makes no sense to me. Like if you have the commissioner going, we need to really regulate this. Let's just get some clarity and everybody knows we can just move on. It's not happening. And uh, again, I hopefully that once we get this this dispute, this uh, lawsuit taken care of with XRP, I think it'll just give it a precedent and we'll kind of move forward to go, okay, well, this is what we saw in this case. We can kind of apply this for other things and off we go. I personally believe Ripple's smart. They got a lot of smart people. They've hired a lot of smart people. And they're just gonna say, look, let's just pay a fine. Let's just go move on with our lives. You guys get money, which is what you want anyhow. We can keep going and then everybody's happy. Let me, that's what I think is going to happen. Anyhow, uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. That'll be an interesting one. And that's it for today. So uh, first of all, if you made this far, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. If you found some value in the video. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive here over on Dan Clips, which is our second channel. We go over more things uh, such as like advancements in cryptocurrency and different projects. We just reviewed Silo, which to me is like, it's like WhatsApp and Venmo and Filecoin all rolled into a decentralized app you can use right now. And I have it on my phone and I use it, which is pretty cool. So you can check that out uh, later when the guys give me the okay. And then lastly, don't forget to check out uh, the uh, buy the dip, sell the flip uh, <laughs> uh, spreadsheet. We'll see how we go, but uh, that's my, that's my uh, thinking. So anyhow, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.